I don't always review laptops, but when I do, I don't, unless the courier delivers one unexpectedly. And since that's exactly what happened, we're going to check out the Ace Magic X1, a very different type of laptop with dual 14 inch displays. And the X1 targets the business and office environment. For that market, I think it succeeds in actually doing something useful. Is it perfect? No, but it does come in handy in meetings to easily share your display. Or for those wanting a dual monitor set up at their desk without needing a standalone monitor that doesn't match the size, color profile, or even resolution. And so, since I'm holding it in my grubby hands, we're going to look at it in depth right after this message. Ezas Partition Master Professional is a comprehensive storage partitioning app for your PC or server. Resize and extend partitions, clone OS drives, convert MBR to GPT, and even recover lost or broken partitions. Find out more in the video description. Ace Magic's X1 is a thin but not light laptop coming in at almost 2 kilos or around 4 pounds. It's made from good quality hard plastic with no creaks. There's a little flex on the two 14 inch 1080p displays, but it's not too bad. The extra weight of the second screen makes it more difficult to open than a usual laptop and the hinge holds on pretty tightly, which is no doubt to help keep it stable. Unless you connect it to an external monitor, you can't use the laptop until you at least fold out the second screen, which is a necessary compromise to protect it from being exposed. Naked. The second display can also be flipped all the way to the back, which is one of the more useful features. You can show a work colleague those important sales graphs while doing something useful, like gaming or working, whichever is the right answer. It's a very useful feature. The other main usage case is as a laptop with dual displays, which works fine on a stable surface. But if you want to use this one on your lap, it's not great. The second screen flails around as you type. It's better to flip the screen onto the back and use it like a regular laptop for this usage case. So the question is, how long will the hinge last? Foldable phones can last a few years depending on how many times you fold them. But you won't be folding this laptop anywhere near as much, so I'd assume if you don't treat it like crap, it'll last long enough to become obsolete. Four display buttons are included on the top right for easy switching. A is the main screen only, B switches to the rotating screen, The third button makes screen A the main display and extends it to B, while the final button duplicates both displays. Perfect to show a work colleague sitting across from you exactly what's on your screen. Just don't press it while on one of those non-work related sites. You know what I'm talking about. <coughs> Porno. Oh, and you can turn off the laptop screens with a function button when using HDMI out. So, it all works well and the two IPS displays have nice color reproduction and max out at 60Hz refresh rate and 300 nits brightness. Having two identical screens is really the best part of the X1. Inside this laptop is Intel's i7-1255U processor, which we've looked at in a mini PC previously. The difference here is it's running at a lower power mode of 15 watts. The 1255U is a 10-core chip made up of two performance cores and eight efficient for a total of 12 threads. Intel's XE integrated graphics powers the displays. Ace Magic's X1 is priced at $899 for the 16GB RAM, 1TB SSD version. That includes a USB-C charger and a manual in the box. Although Ace Magic has provided my viewers with a coupon for an extra $50 off, which you can find in the video description. Like the majority of laptops, ports aren't the X1 strong suit, but this one has very few available. On the right side is a USB 3 5 gigabit port and HDMI 2.0. On the left side is a USB-C 5 gigabit, which supports display out, and the other one is for charging only. So with only one USB-A and C port, you might need to use a USB hub, especially if you like using a wide keyboard and mouse. Also, whether you use the USB-C or HDMI port, you're limited to three displays total. The final note about the two USB ports is that they didn't like my external SSD. Other USB devices worked fine, but the SSD would drop out or work at USB 2 speeds. A Realtek 8852B Wi-Fi 6 chip is used for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and the Bluetooth range is good. When testing my audio speaker, 
it had the same result as the best mini PC I've tested. Wi-Fi range is also good. At 12 meters or 39 feet from the router using the 5G band, there were no network issues detected during the eSports game test. I'm not a laptop keyboard and trackpad aficionado, but the keyboard does feel nice enough to type on and the trackpad is responsive. I've used worse and don't have any real complaints apart from the lack of LED lighting on the keyboard. Not great when typing in a darker environment. The power button has a fingerprint sensor and it works well to sign in to your account quickly. It's a feature that saves time over using a password. Now let's have a look inside it. There are 10 screws on the back. Then prying it open is the most difficult part. Once you get the tool in there, just slide it along all sides until it pops off. And watch out for the cables. There's a large 62 watt hour battery included. The M.2 wireless card is replaceable and there's space for an additional M.2 Gen 3 NVMe drive. DDR4 memory is soldered on and not upgradable. Windows 11 Pro is included and a malware scan came up clean. Ubuntu works fine, although the buttons for changing the display options don't work at all. So you'll have to manually switch screen configurations if you plan to use Linux. Everything else in Ubuntu works fine. The speakers are, well, very laptop style. No bass and little mids. They just do the job of providing audio and are fine for phone calls, but not great for much else. Unless you don't care about audio quality when watching video or listening to music. And with no audio jack, you can't easily plug headphones in. The X1 also includes a webcam. While it does 1080p, it looks like 480p and provides a low quality image, but the microphone sounds pretty decent. All right, so we're looking at a low powered U-series processor set at a lower power limit to increase battery life and cope with a cooling system made up of only two copper heat pipes. I've only got mini PC data using high power modes, but I think it'll be a decent comparison against the other U-series processors. The 1255U in the X1 does okay in single core against the AMD Ryzen chips, but the 15 watt power mode definitely takes a hit compared to 25. Multicore also sees a drop. This is not a multicore speed demon, but for spreadsheets and whatnot, you'll never notice. Here's the Geekbench single core data, and it's even beating the 6900HX, which is interesting. For multi-core, it comes out ahead against the 5700U. Not in video encoding though, where it's clearly behind everything else. The included NVMe SSD is Gen 3, and sequential speed is maxed out, but write speed is less impressive. Again, for office use, plenty fast. So, does the 15 watt power mode lower the integrated graphics performance? Short answer, yes. Long answer, you can see the difference right here in DX11. The X1 beats the 5700U running on single channel memory, but is behind the 25W 1255U, and in DX12, matches the i5 12450H. In Steel Nomad, it drops behind the 5700U. So the 1255U in the X1 is no speed demon. Before its intended use, it's plenty fine. And while you wouldn't buy it for gaming, you can of course play some simpler stuff. However, I'm more interested in its video editing capabilities. The 1255U at 25 watts handled my 4K video project pretty well. So let's test it. And yeah, it's still pretty good. Impressive that even at the lower power limit, 4K video editing in my project still holds up. That Intel quick sync feature sure does wonders. Okay. Battery result time. We've got two results for continuous use with one or two screens playing a 1080p movie. Screen brightness and volume are at 50% with Wi-Fi turned off. The best result is almost five hours with one screen. Now for max CPU temperature. With a 30 minute full core load test, it peaked at 92C. For business use, you're unlikely to reach this temp unless you're doing video encoding or some other multi-core workload. Noise-wise, the fan does ramp up and down a bit with light use. Under a full core load, fan noise goes up higher and at least stays constant. SSD maximum drive temp was on the high side during the thrash test, but for its intended use, 
should hold up just fine. Alright, so let's wrap this one up. Ace Magic's X1 does something different, and the matching dual screen implementation works pretty well, especially if you flip it to the back or use it on a desk. The display function buttons are really helpful. It has good wireless range and battery life is also good. My 4K video project worked well even on this low powered CPU. However, the laptop is lacking in ports. It's pretty heavy given its size and is noisier than I thought it would be when it's doing nothing. Also, the webcam has poor video quality. DDR4 3200 memory is soldered on and not upgradable. All that being said, if you do need something with matching dual screens in this orientation, there isn't anything quite like it, and for a first attempt, I think it's a success. But if you don't think you'll be moving your PC around the office much, maybe you'd be interested in a mini PC instead. Depending on the mini, there's a benefit of less fan noise, more performance, and of course, more ports. You can check out my Ace Magic Mini PC review right here. Cheers!